everybody welcome back to my channel so today i am back with a very highly requested review i recently did a haul and there was one particular brand that everyone requested i do a review on and now that i had a chance to really experience these fragrances for the last couple of like I don't know two weeks or so I can definitely tell you guys all of my thoughts on BDK which is a niche house that has taken the community by storm I mean everyone was talking about BDK I was a little bit late to the game because these aren't cheap but <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you guys about the brand the fragrances that I have which you guys already know and just my thoughts overall on the entire thing so if you guys are excited about this video then definitely stay tuned and as always if you're new subscribe to the channel because it's free and we are fun if you're not following me on Instagram, then go ahead and follow me there. I don't say that all the time, but honey, I would love it if you guys follow me on Instagram. And if you get anything via my recommendations or are watching my videos, definitely feel free to tag me on your stories. I love reposting that kind of stuff. And let's go ahead and get into this video. So like I said, I recently hauled fragrances from BDK and I was really, really excited to try out this brand. I've heard so many people speak very highly of them. I think Demi Rollins really put them on the map because she did a couple of videos about BDK and there are there was one particular fragrance which is Rouge Smoking that got quite a lot of hype and then the other one that I picked up was Wood Jasmine which I honestly don't hear a ton of people talking about on YouTube but I did hear that's quite popular on Instagram maybe I miss it there um, and I also do have a sample of uh, Grease Carnal, I think that's how you say the name. So I will be talking about only these three scents. I definitely plan on picking up at least two more that are very, very interesting to me. And hopefully they will be great positive reviews. Um, so when I do get them in, I will talk about them in a video, obviously. But let's chat about BDK. So they are a French house. They have quite a few selections to um, pick from and all of their fragrances come in this style of bottle right over here. The juice is always different and I believe the cap is different but the bottle is like this. And when you do pick up these fragrances, I forgot to mention, this is the box that you get them in. So they look like this, almost like a book. And then you open it um, on this side here and your fragrance will be laying inside of this box over here. So it's a really nice um, kind of presentation. I think they did a really good job for a niche house. The bottles are not my favorite, I will say. I do find them quite bulky, but they are high quality. I definitely feel that they are substantial in terms of the weight. Um, the cap is nice and solid. It's really fixated on there. You really kind of have to pull it off. It's not going to be wobbling all over the place. And again, even the actual um, glass bottle, this is complete glass, does have quite a bit of weight. So I appreciate the quality of the bottle and they do have their logo right here on the cap. I believe all of them have it same as with this one so you have it stamped right there on the cap let's start off by talking about rouge jasmine which is what everyone has been talking about so i'm going to give you guys my full opinion now when i did first smell this fragrance i thought it was absolutely divine i fell in love with it you know i really did fall in love with it this is the 100 mil or the 3.4 four fluid ounce and I believe all of their fragrances only come in 100 mil I will link them down below for sure so when you go on Fragrantica it does say the main accords are vanilla sweet powdery cherry amber musk almond wood and balsamic now I'm gonna smell this and then tell you guys my thoughts once again you guys have heard it already in the first impression I want to say that the atomizer on these are Stunning guys, absolutely stunning. The mist is so nice and smooth and fine. Look at that, it's it's a continuous mist. That's kind of like my favorite atomizer. Oh yeah, I really enjoy Rouge Smoking simply because I don't have a lot of like cherry type of fragrances in my collection. This is probably my first one where the cherry note is the most predominant in the fragrance. I feel like even though the cherry note is only in the opening, it is there throughout the entire stay of the fragrance. You're going to get it in the top, the mid, and the uh, base of this fragrance. In the dry down, I get a lot of the cherry. 
When I smell this fragrance, it's, it kind of reminds me of like a Dr. Pepper kind of fragrance. Um, it's a little fizzy. It's bright. Um, it's warm. It's a little spicy, but not too spicy. It's more in the opening with that pink pepper. It's not um, like a sugar sweet, but you are going to get almost like a fruity sweet. Overall, I think that Rouge Smoking is a fragrance that is very likable. It's one that a lot of people are just going to be attracted to. It has all the elements that you need to make a fragrance smell mass appealing. You have a kind of like hints of vanilla in there. It's warm. It's a little spicy. Uh, it has that beautiful cherry in there that kind of really brightens up and at the same time kind of deepens up the fragrance. It's kind of weird to describe this one because I feel like at the same time, it's not overly dark, but it is. It's, it's hard. It's hard for me to describe, but it's one that I honestly will say most people will quite enjoy this one. Again, you have to like um, a cherry note because it is definitely very predominant, but it doesn't just smell like a fruity fragrance. You know, like I love that they didn't combine a bunch of other different fruits in here because it would just become too fruity. I find the cherry note is really nicely placed in here. And all the other notes really intertwine with it nicely. To me, it's a fragrance that has that almost like addictive nature to it. When you smell this, you're going to enjoy it. And you're going to want to wear it quite often. And that's the way I feel about it. When I pick this up, it's one that I can just sniff all day. And then I kind of just want to douse myself in this fragrance. It's very, very likable. Definitely has that sweet element. And again, it's not like a sugar sweet to me. To me, it's more like it's more like a fruity sweet, but everything balances it off so it doesn't become overly sweet on my skin. Like I can really go ham with the sprays with this one because it doesn't become overly sweet. The longevity on this is very, very poor. Very poor. This fragrance is beautiful. I love wearing it. It's kind of like addictive, but it disappears very fast fast and it's not one that others around me are going to also smell because I've asked my husband do you smell it and he's like no um it's a fragrance that for me to really get a good I want to say at least four or five hours I have to over 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 <laughs> spray this one on my skin on my clothes on my hair then it will last you know a decent amount but it's no heavy hitter fragrance. It's not going to leave an intoxicating trail um, like I thought it would in my first impression. It actually kind of disappears very fast. That is really like the disappointing part about this fragrance because the juice alone, I love. I really, really love it. But the lasting power really isn't there. So if you don't mind that, if like longevity isn't like an issue for you, you don't mind over spraying, taking a little vial with you and topping up your fragrance, then I think you would absolutely love it if you're contemplating getting this one. But if you're those that really think about the performance of a fragrance, honestly, I have to put it straight and say that this is terrible in performance. I saw some comments about comparing this to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I have smelt Lost Cherry and I find that Lost Cherry has a little bit more depth to it. It's definitely deeper um, in, in the way that it smells and the way that it dries down on the skin and it also lasts longer than rouge smoking. So those are the main factors. This one is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit airier. And then the Tom Ford has a bit more of a kick to it. It has a little bit more depth and darkness to it. Um, has a little bit more of a sexier quality, even though I'd still find rouge smoking a little bit more on the sensual side. When comparing to Tom Ford, that one is definitely like oomph. So now let's talk about Wood Jasmine. This was a complete buy, blind buy. Like I don't even remember looking up notes. I literally just went on the website 
And I think I saw, saw maybe like the main accords or something like that. And I went on a whim and got wood jasmine. This is again the 100 mil. I love the bottle, like the color combination of this bottle a lot more than rouge smoking. I don't know, something about this one is not like the most appealing. This one, I love this brass tone that they have going on on the lid. Like, oh, that is stunning right there i think it's just beautiful um the main accords it says here it is amber balsamic fruity woody sweet white floral vanilla smoky and spicy when you do smell this one you will get a more of a unique approach to a fragrance oh the itemizers are to die for right away when you smell it that plum note really gives you a boozy kind of vibe it smells like almost like wine intertwined with whiskey that's what i get from this one so it is a very boozy like scent a little fruity also in the opening you definitely will pick up a little of that patchouli, but it's not heavy. It's not like earthy patchouli. It's more, you're getting more of like a green um, background in this fragrance, um, definitely. The jasmine in here is a dirty jasmine. I stand by what I said in my first impression. I find that the jasmine in here, we do have like two types of jasmine and actually we have Egyptian jasmine and jasmine sandback. I'm not sure what that is either, <laughs> but it smells like a dirty jasmine to me and now when i look at the notes you definitely pick up on that rose note um the jasmine is a little bit more predominant than the rose in the dry down you're slightly going to pick up more on that uh almost dry spicy rose note and it's a little musky it's a little musky but to me it's a boozy jasmine rose fragrance it's warm it's spicy it's a little animalic and on paper that animalic kind of vibe is more subsided than on the skin i want to say i'm just going to kind of spray it on my skin yeah on my skin that animalic vibe comes up a little bit stronger in the opening but it dries down a little bit more subtle so don't be scared when i say animalic again that plum note really gives you a boozy like a pretty heavy boozy vibe of like for me it reminds me more of like a whiskey um some people it might come off more as like a wine but to me i'm getting more of this like whiskey element to it a little bit more of like a drier boozy vibe rather than a sweet cognac or a rum it's definitely a drier boozy in it, booziness in here and this is a fragrance to me that really commands attention. It's very different. And I feel like this would look, this would vibe really well with like a special occasion, even a date night. Um, it's just not your average type of scent. To me, it's very different. It's very unique. And I can appreciate the quality. Not sure why it's called wood jasmine because I don't get woodiness from this fragrance i thought maybe there was oud in here which there isn't so the name is a little bit deceiving same with um rouge smoking i was expecting a smoky fragrance and this is far from smoky to me so the names can be a little bit deceiving and last but not least we have a little sample size of the gris carnau i think I think that's how you say it right there. There is the name. They were kind enough to send off this sample when I got the two other full size. So that is really cool that I was able to play around with this scent. Um, this one over here got a lot of hype also. A lot, a lot of hype. And I was excited to try this one. I was actually really pleasantly surprised that they sent a sample of this one. So the main accords on this one is Woody warm spicy aromatic powdery iris fruity sweet earthy and green so i'm going to spray that again and remind myself okay this one i like and to me this one is a unique fragrance same as wood jasmine but i find this one is a lot more wearable than wood jasmine now when i spray this one i'm gonna spray it again I get the fig and 
the fig in here isn't super abrasive. Like if you have Mon Monsetta's um, Pearl, that is a harsh fig fragrance. Like actually very, very harsh. Um, I can't pull it off, but on my husband, oh, smells like a, uh, smells good, okay? Um, this fig is a little bit more tolerable. And I think maybe the black tea really balances it off. I don't get too much of that cardamom note in the opening. I'm going to be quite honest. I don't get it like it's not super strong. It's not super predominant. For me, it's the black tea and the fig that I pick up the most. It is slightly powdery, not overly powdery with that iris note. To me, it's not overly powdery because I cannot do overly powdery fragrances. So it's really balanced off nicely. To the point that the powderiness in this fragrance is just very suave and silky-like. It's not super coated with powder, <laughs> if you will. Um, so it's quite tolerable when it comes to the powderiness. And the sandalwood in here is very suave and very likable. Honestly, this is a fragrance that I actually want a full bottle of. I really like it on the skin, on paper. It's beautiful. It smells very different, very hard to kind of pinpoint every single note without you looking at it. Um, it's just a very like wearable fragrance to me, but in a very unique way. And I find this is a fragrance that you could probably wear all year round. Uh, to me, it's not coming off too warm, too cool. I can definitely see this balancing off in the winter, balancing off in the spring, the summer, whatever you may wear it. On the skin, it comes off a little bit more warm, just a little bit more warm than on paper. And it's definitely a unisex fragrance. This is not coming off too feminine. It's not coming off too manly. It is definitely right there in between. So I can see a man wearing this and it's smelling fabulous, but also a woman wearing this. Oh yeah, I like it. I really, really like it. I think it's just unique. It's different. It's... um. It's just different and I love unique and different fragrances that maybe not everyone is going to absolutely love. You're not going to get a ton of compliments on them, but it just makes me love what I'm smelling on myself and kind of stand out from the crowd at times. Like I have my moments where I love my crowd pleasing scents. Yes, give me flower bomb. Give me, you know, La Vie est Belle, but sometimes something like this really captivates me, especially if I want to make a lasting impression, something unique, something a little bit unusual will do that. And this one definitely did that. So this is a fragrance that I want to add to my collection. If I were to select, I would probably let go of Rouge Smoking and get this one over uh, Rouge Smoking as much as I love the juice, this one. Now the Lasting Power um, I'm not sure if I touched up on wood jasmine. It definitely lasts a lot longer than rouge smoking. Still not beast mode, still not the most longest lasting, but it lasts a good like four hours with me having not having to overspray. Um, this is one that I actually don't think I can overspray. I think it's quite loud when you first spray it. So that's the difference. And with this one here, it sits closer to the skin. It lasts a decent amount, but sits closer to the skin. So to me, this one doesn't really project as loud. Mind you, I'm not really over spraying. I only have this little vial. So when I get the bottle, I can test it out a lot more. But to me, it lasts longer. To me, out of the three, the worst performing one is definitely rouge smoking. Guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys saw something new and cool today. Definitely leave your comments down below. I can't wait to hear from you. Let me know what is your go-to BDK fragrance. What are your opinions on the fragrances that I already talked about and how do they perform on you? Let us know in the comment section because fragrances are very personal and they work really differently on everyone's. And I will see you all on the next one. Ciao!